two things promised by President Duterte during his campaign were the Freedom of Information Bill and the burial of Marcos at the Libingan Mabayani, both of which currently facing some challenges. To talk us through these, we have joining us this morning, Dean Mel Santa Maria. Hi, Mel. Good of you to join us this morning. Good morning, Dean. Now, the FOI bill, you know, everyone was very excited when there was an executive order passing it, but 166 exemptions in the draft. Sounds, sounds like a watered-down bill. Too many. Just too many. And if you will look at the tentative list, you will see uh, prohibition against uh, asking for revel or revelations on detailed congressional fund spending, uh, bank, uh, bank records, and even court records of cases, and even uh, um, uh, personal information, which is very, very important. So it's really a watered-down version now. Because even um, Senator Grace Poe was saying that, you know, he was, she was also questioning about the restrictions on the sal end because what she That's wanted correct. was yes. publishing it on the agency's website. But right. now they're saying that it's only for specific purposes. Right. Uh, you know, the key, the key on this freedom of information in, in, is in the very first word, freedom. So the default mode must be if, if a citizen asks for the personal information of a government employee, the default mode must be, it should be given. It should be given. And only a court order could restrict that individual from getting it. If you recall the freedom of travel and freedom of abode in the Constitution, there are only three limitations. National security, public safety, and public health. And the restrictions are interpreted narrowly. Very narrowly and only upon court order. But this one, 166, that's super water downing of, of this uh, What's going on FOI. here, Mal? I mean, the... President Duterte was very adamant about freedom of information and yet we see this happening because the essence is full public disclosure but with 166 exemptions. What do you think is going on? Well, maybe because of interest. You, 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 you talk about conflict of interest all the time. You have private and public uh, functions merging and uh, it's superseded by your private interest. And then there you are. You insert so many exceptions just to, you know, protect, protect yourselves. What should be done is to come up with a law saying that revelation should be given outright except, except if prohibited by a court order. Simply that way and you'll go a long way. And one interesting that I also that, that also um, caused me to raise my eyebrows, I included exemptions on law enforcement matters relating to apprehension, prosecution, and detention of criminals and investigations. That doesn't sound like a usual exemption that we would see. That is correct because, as you know, a criminal act is a public crime and it's a public, it has a very social aspect that's why in a criminal case, it's people of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. It's like a crime against the nation. That is correct. That is the, that is a theory there. So why should you not reveal it? Why should you make prohibitions there? Especially if the crimes are, for example, plunder, uh, graph, or cor uh, graph and corruption. That should be open to the public. So really, it's it's such a watered down thing. And and uh, Secretary Andenar said it's just a tentative list. Right. It's just a draft. It's just a draft, probably they will still cut, cut the list and uh, maybe they will, uh, in a way, come to their senses and, you know, instead of coming up with a freedom of information, they'll come up with a, you know, what, a freedom of, uh, freedom of curtailment or something like that? It's just the opposite. So do you think the chances of a bill passing through Congress would have a better chance? Oh, definitely. A bill passed by Congress is the best way to come up with a freedom of information bill. Because an executive order is just an executive fiat which will always be subject to law. And people can just say, or government people can just say, you know, I'm, my hands are tied by this, you know, by this bank secrecy law or by this BIR law, uh, this allowing revelation of my income tax. So, you know, all excuses can be made if the law is not amended. The hearing on the FOI bill will happen on September 1, but prior to that, tomorrow, the hearing, oral arguments on the petitions against a burial of um, former President Marcos de Libingan and Bayani will happen. So this is, you know, hardly the Supreme Court will meddle into policy, but this time it has become a legal issue. What's the main contention? Well, it, it's, it's really a legal issue because, as you know, uh, President Ferdinand Marcos is a, is a different president. He is the only president where the state was compelled to come up with legislation specifically for him. As legislation on reparation on, in relation to the victims of uh, human rights violations. And you have the PCGG Act. 
Uh, but so, still a president nonetheless, so why not allow him to be buried, living in a mga bayani where other presidents could be buried as because well? Because the controlling law is Republic Act 289, which says that all presidents must be buried in that place, presidents which are inspirations and uh, inspirations to generations, and who, who can be emulated by generations now and in the future. So the law provides you, you a rule and also a parameter, a standard. They must complement each other, they must concur. If one is absent, then you're out. The standard is very clear, inspiration and worth emulating. But Mel, what's the difference? They say that it can't change history, whether he's buried there or not, it's not going to change anything from the past. Yeah, that's correct, but, but that's great. It's not only, it's not only uh, forgetting a, mar a bygone year of the Marcus a uh, period. It's trying to learn a lesson from history also. A lesson, that's the, one of the darkest moments in Philippine history, the martial law period. That's why, by way of public policy, Republic Act 10368 said, it's a public policy of the state to recognize the extrajudicial killing, the summer execution, the torture, the gross violation of human rights perpetuated during the Marcos regime. It's a public policy. It's a determination of fact by the legislature, which we all must adhere to. We cannot escape it. So if we do not do that, then what happens to the Constitution? And you know the Constitution is a reaction to the Marcos regime. It's a product of the Marcos regime. If, and if you, if, you, if you bear him at the living end of the Bayan, it is as if you're mocking the Constitution. And considering that the government has also, the Supreme Court has invited officials from the Commission on Human Rights as well to come to the oral arguments tomorrow, we will definitely be hearing that side of the arguments. Thank you very much, That's Mel, true. for being with us this morning.